Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my tutorial on how to make a cross-browser horizontal menu like you see here on the screen. This menu is going to use almost no JavaScript. It is, in fact, going to use no JavaScript in all browsers except for Internet Explorer 6 and 7 because they require it to work properly. And I'm going to walk you through the whole entire process of making one of these guys so you completely understand it. All right, so basically a horizontal menu or a vertical menu is just an unordered list. That's all it is. And you can see over over here on the right side of the screen. Basically what we have here is a div item that's going to surround everything. And let me bring this up to maybe explain it a little bit better. Basically we have a div, a big giant box that's going to contain an unordered list. And then across the top, and let's switch over to this guy. Right here where you see products and services, available workshops and so forth. Those are actually anchors that are inside of list items and everything that's going across the top in this situation is an unordered list with list items and anchors inside side of it. Then, whenever we trigger a hover over one of these buttons, like you see right here, that makes all of these additional ULs that also contain list items and anchor tags inside of them. Now let's make this real simple. I'm going to jump over here and show this unordered list, and I'm going to jump in here and start showing you just how easy it is to edit all this. All right, so I'm in index.html is the name of the file, but it doesn't really matter what the name of the file would be. And what I want to do is I want to add some styling to this unordered list, just to to show you how simple it is to change things. So I want to link out to a style sheet and all of this code is available in a link underneath this video. H reference is equal to and then in, in a CSS folder I have a file called style.css type is equal to and text forward slash CSS and that is how you point towards a style sheet. Alright so if we file save that and then I jump over into said file here is style.css and I want to start doing some styling on this guy to make it actually kind of work like a menu it's really simple. All that I need to do is say I want to point at the ul name drop down and then ul's underneath of that Remember, everything's in contained inside of a UL. Visibility is equal to hidden. And if I file save that, just that little bit of a change and reload it, you can now see that all those ULs disappeared. Well, well if I want to bring them all back, how do I do that? Really simple, actually. I'm just going to go UL named drop down. If I hover my mouse over top of an LI item or a list item inside of there, I want to make changes to the UL item that lies directly underneath of it. And in this situation, I want to set its visibility to visible. If we file save it and reload, you can see now whenever I put my mouse over these ULs, or these LI items actually, that all these other different things will show up. So basically the rest of it's just styling. And like I said, this works on every browser except for any Internet Explorer prior to Internet Explorer 7. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back over into index.html and we're going to throw in all of our additional list items. And just to make sure you're 100% certain, we have a div called menu menu controller. And this is actually the default list that are created by WordPress. So this will work automatically inside of WordPress, but of course it'll work on any other website. And then you have a UL item and name drop down. That's what this is called. And then there's a list item underneath of it. You don't even need to worry about this, but like I said, this is automatically generated. And then there's your anchor tag that's right there. And then if you want to have additional unordered lists or drop downs that come underneath that, well, you just create another UL without closing off the LI tag and then create additional LI tags until you got enough. And then you close off the LI, the UL, and you work your way back up. So that's all it is, unordered list. So I just pasted in a great big, huge, giant menu and reload it. And now you can see all the different menu items and how they're positioning themselves on the screen. So basically I have to edit all of these now. But I did say there is JavaScript needed in part of this so that it works inside of Internet Explorer. So I'm just going to jump in here right after where it's calling for the default jQuery code that I'm going to use here. And I'm just going to say script type is equal to text JavaScript language is equal to JavaScript, and then I'm going to point at my JavaScript file. I'm going to call it cross browser menu.js and then close off my script section. All right, so now we're going to be able to create that. And we've done every single thing that we need to do for the index. So I'm going to jump over into style and I'm going to start styling this guy. I'm just going to move this down and I'm going to jump right into styling the div that surrounds it. It's called menu menu container. In my situation, you can call it whatever you want. Just put a div around it. That's all you need to do. And in this situation, I'm going to say that I want to target everything inside of menu menu container. 
And these are the sort of things you do whenever you want to make things cross browser. Margin, I'm going to set it to zero. Everything by default is going to start off with margins and paddings of zero. And I'm also going to say that I want to use a font. And this is another cross browser thing. If you want to have your fonts resize inside of all versions of Internet Explorer, you have to define them using EM instead of pixels. So PT, Sans. And then I'm just going to define my fonts. And I'm going to say that I want all my fonts on top of that to be white so that you won't be able to see them reload and you can see they all disappeared but we're going to correct that in a second now what i'm going to do is make some additional changes inside of menu menu container like i said that's basically for internet explorer what we just did right there i'm going to say that i want my menu bar to have a width of 1000 pixels margin i'm sort of doing some things here just so i can go over some css things if i want to define my top and bottom as zero pixels that's how you do it and then if i want to have left and right be auto well you just do it like that this is top and bottom and this is left and right so it's sort of shorthand notation and then let's say i want to give it a border of one pixel and remember this is the whole entire div that surrounds the entire menu 383b8a which is like a blue and then i want to float the whole entire menu left it just means take the whole entire div and butt it up to the left hand side of the screen. Then I'm also going to find my background, that same blue. And then I'm going to provide a sort of gradient on here. I actually have this saved because I use this all of the time. Basically, this is a cross browser way of doing gradients. It's real simple. It's basically just copy and paste code. You know, no reason to memorize all this. It's insane. But basically what you define is the top of your gradient. That's the first color. And then it's going to progress towards this color. And then you can see here in the notes and you find a gradient in a menu or whatever inside of Internet Explorer. This is for WebKit browsers and then this is for Firefox. And that is how I'm going to create my gradient inside of there. Reload it. And you can see now that all these different things are showing up here and you can actually see them. Well, one problem that's sort of sticking itself out there is I want to get rid of those underlines. So I'm going to go menu, menu, container, A. And if I want to get rid of those underlines, just go text decoration none reload and there you go now we got rid of those that's nice another thing i want to do inside of here is get rid of any list styling that might show up meaning the bullets list style and none all right so we got rid of those bullets and then i want to style the unordered list name drop down and we know it's a class because it has a dot in front of it if it was an id this would be a hash but it's not so we're gonna let it that way position it relative to where it is so any changes i make in regards to this guy is going to move it up and down right and left based off of its current default position on the screen that's all that means create another ul drop down and here i'm going to target the list items make changes to those guys i want to float them left and then for internet explorer whenever you type in zoom cola one to follow layout rules that i need to do here that's basically why that's in there and in my background again in this situation i'm going to have the same exact colors here so i'm just going to copy that jump down here paste that in and like i said before that makes a nice little gradient that looks nice on the screen and let's file save it see what we're doing here reload and now you can see that these guys are all button up kind of nastily together but they are going more like a menu that's good give myself a bunch of space here gonna go in here and make a couple little changes drop down whenever you hover over the links i want to change the color of the text to white and of course, this is kind of in here just in case you would want to change these later on. A couple other things you'd want to do. Of course, I can make these non-white. If you wanted to change the color of the text based off of it being the current active link, there's also additional styling you could provide. And I'm just throwing these in here so that this is a very customizable menu system, even though I'm not using that customization in this tutorial. And then I'm going to target list items, anchor tags that are contained inside of list items. And I'm going to say I want to display them as block elements. And that just means that I want to be able to define their height and their width and their padding and so forth and so on. And so I'm going to define their padding. Six pixels, ten pixels. Remember, top, bottom, left, right. That's what's going on there. And then I also want to put in a nice little border on the right of it. It's a one pixel solid. And I'm using that same blue that we had before. Of course, you could change these colors as well. And I'm defining my text color again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a hover class using jQuery. And I use jQuery a lot because it helps me keep things cross browser. So that's why I do it. Now, if you wanted, let's just come in here, drop down, li dot hover. And then I'm also going to go ul drop down, li colon hover and define my background. And I'm going to use that other color, this guy right here. 
goes from dark to light. And then again, text, FFF, border. And I'm putting a lot of things in here that aren't going to change on my menu, just so, like I said before, you can change those things in the future quite easily because everything's already built in there. So you say, okay, well, I want to change the text color, even though everything's white already. It's going to allow you very easily to go in there and change that color. Or I want to change the border or I want to do whatever. So that's why those things are in there. Position, relative. Again, want any changes to apply to where it is currently on the screen. And then I'm also going to throw this in here, drop down. I'm trying to think of all the different ways that you might want to apply changes to this menu. So let's say that you, as a person, would like to be able to change the color of the font for the anchor tag whenever you're hovering over top of it. Even though I didn't do it, that's how you would do it. And now we're going to start doing our drop down styling. So this guy is actually going to be our first drop down. And that's how you do commenting inside of CSS. All right, first thing I'm going to target are unordered list items name drop down that have a ul underneath of them so i'm targeting all of those unordered lists and i'm going to say that i want them all to have a width of 200 pixels so i'm basically defining buttons here visibility is equal to hidden so i don't want them to display on a screen let's just get rid of these so it doesn't cause any confusion so i'm saying i want all the unordered lists to not be shown on the screen I am defining that they are going to take up 200 pixels in width. I want to position them absolutely on the screen. Top, 100%. And what this does is it sets the top to the bottom of the containing box. Let me show what I mean. So here we are defining this guy. See where it says products and services? Here it says social media. Well, by putting in 100%, that means I want social media, this box that surrounds it, to butt up underneath, directly underneath of this unordered list that lies above it. So that is what top 100% means. It means I want to be butted up right underneath of this UL that's right there. Okay, so that's what that means. And then left, zero, that sets it left equal to the containing box that's right there. So that just keeps it absolutely to the left side of where it is on the screen. So that's how you do positioning using percentages versus absolute. And then I'm gonna define UL, drop down, UL, and then the LI tags that lie inside of those unordered lists, like that. And here, real simple again, I'm going to come up here, grab this guy, and just paste that little gradient inside of there. Of course, you could change these stylings, and that's why I provide you that option. And what else might you want to change on these list items whenever they pop on the screen? Well, you might want to change your text color. You might want to put a border bottom underneath of those list items. And in this situation, I'll put it one pixel. I'll make it solid. And I'm going to make it white just to be pouring. And then I want to set my float for none. And we do that for Internet Explorer once again. And I'm trying to put together a tutorial that sort of explains everything that's bad about Internet Explorer so that you can fix things. Just been struggling on that a little bit. Another thing Internet Explorer is going to require here, drop down, UL, LI, A, is for these anchor tags to be displayed none. Border, right, width is equal to 100%. And this is sort of like tricks that I've learned over the years, how to work with Internet Explorer. And how do you find things like this? A lot of experimenting. That will make everything show up right in Internet Explorer. And then I want to do my second layer of drop downs, styling. Let's file save it and see how this guy's changed. You could see it's pulling itself together here, but the drop downs are not showing up. But a lot of the styling has been done. So I have to come in here and fix all the additional styling that needs finished. Well, I want to go UL, drop down, and I want to target the second grouping of unordered lists on the screen. And I'm just going to say left colon 100%. And this is going to position the item to the right of the containing block. Remember how I did before top 100% positioned it directly underneath of it? Well, whenever you put left 100%, it pops up right here next to it and perfectly matches up to the UL that is to the left of it. So if you put top 100%, you come up 100% underneath of the bottom. And if you put left 100%, you come butt up right next to the rightmost side with the leftmost side of this guy that you're creating. And this is the guy that I'm creating right now. So hopefully that makes sense. And then top, we're gonna set to zero. And what this is gonna do is set the top to the top of the containing box so that it's on the right side of the containing UL that's right here. That is what we're defining. We're saying we want it to basically be horizontal, which is what you see on the screen, whatever it's created. And then the final thing that we need to do here is go UL, draw, down. And we actually did this before. LI, hover. We want to target all ULs that are directly underneath of 
any li tags that are hovered over top of. And what do we want to do? We're going to go visibility visible and I showed you that before reload and there you can see everything's popping up exactly the way we want it now this would work absolutely perfectly except in IE 6 and 7 without any JavaScript at all but like I said Internet Explorer is difficult so we're gonna go fix that so I'm gonna jump over into cross browser menu .js, and what this basically is saying is whenever this document is loaded we want a function to be called and executed so everything inside of here is gonna be executed so what we're gonna do in jQuery is go UL, we're targeting all LI tags that are contained inside of a UL name dropdown. That's what that does. And we're saying on hover, whenever those are hovered over, we want to call a function. And if some of this doesn't make sense to you, just leave a note below. Then we want to say this, meaning this LI tag that is contained inside of a UL name dropdown. That's what this means. We want to add a class to it. And the class that we want to add to it is the hover class. And then we want to say UL first. This, what we're going to do is add a CSS rule visibility, which we showed you before. Like I said, this is needed for Internet Explorer, but no other browsers. And we want to set it to visible. And then we want to close off that guy, but then we want to call another function. And I'm going to close this function. Basically, what I just closed here is that bracket and that bracket. See? Curly bracket, da 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 da. And I'm going to actually copy this because we're going to be doing a lot of the same things here. Paste that inside of there. Say this. We want to remove a class called hover. And then UL first. We want to target this guy and set its visibility to hidden. And nothing's really going to change because this is Google Chrome. So there's no point in me even showing it. And one last thing you may want to do is if you want to target just Internet Explorer browsers, I'm going to jump over into index.html. And let's say we want to provide specific styling only if Internet Explorer versions are being used. How you do that is you actually put a comment like this and then go if, in this situation, I'm going to go later than Internet Explorer 7, which is where all the problems lie. And then this and if and close off that comment section. So this is only going to be called if Internet Explorer is trying to look at this. And then you go style sheet type is equal to text forward slash CSS and then just point at this style sheet that you want to be used if Internet Explorer is used. And it's going to use both style sheets but it's going to use this style sheet in addition with Internet Explorer. So that's how you would link out and include additional resources if it's an IE browser. Let's file save that. And then something you would use in this situation, like I said, I could have used it in the other file, but let's just use it here. UL dropdown, UL, LI, LI tags need to be defined as display inline. And then also another requirement for those old versions of Internet Explorer is the width be 100%. And this just defines that the width depends on the size of the containing block. And reload and everything's happy. Everything works out exactly the way that we wanted it. Leave any questions or comments below. Like I said before, all the code is available underneath this video. Otherwise, till next time.